back to the lectures on animal physiology in NPTEL. So, we are in section 5 and in lecture 9. So, today we will be discussing about the special senses, senses which are fairly advanced in human being and in other species some of these senses are better than human being, yet some others are lesser than human being. So, one the senses which we will be talking about which will, will include hearing which is fairly well developed in human being. There are certain other species like dogs and few others which could sense vibrations at much lower frequencies which we cannot sense. Apart from it we will be talking about the vision which is very very well developed in human being as compared to other species. Then we will be talking a little bit about the taste and then we will talk about olfaction. In case of olfaction in human being it is less developed as compared to uh, species like rats or some other species which depends a whole lot on olfaction. So, the logic is like this the modality or the sense which is used maximum by a species is much more well developed as compared to the modalities which are used less. So, in case of small rodents like you know uh, mice or rats they needed a lot of support from the olfaction because they had to smell around and they had to reach their food or their target. Whereas, in our situation we depend whole lot because we are kind of you know a straight like an erect. So, we have to look around. So, we are tall. So, we depend a whole lot on our vision and our hearing. These are much more well advanced uh, modalities as compared to olfaction. Maybe at some point or other while human being was evolving olfaction may would have been a better uh, modality, but currently our olfactory power is far less as compared to the olfactory power of a rat or a mice. Whereas, our taste buds are much more fine tuned. So, let us start with kind of you know getting an idea what is happening, but basic theme what one has to which I will be drawing anyway one has to realize is that these special sense organs are nothing but very specialized neurons. These neurons have the ability to sense the specific modalities like light frequencies or sound waves or a particular molecule binding which is called gustatory or taste buds or volatiles in the form of nose in the nose the, the volatiles are being identified. And these informations are coded all along and reaches to the central nervous system and within the central nervous system these are being decoded. Because it is it is something like this say for example, someone in your childhood taught you while you are growing that this is an apple. So, now you see an apple then that wave moves through the brain and in the brain the specific area which has already a stored memory of apple tells you to realize oh ok this is an apple. Same way you smell something say for example, you smell H 2 S gas which are kind of very awkward smell ok. So, if someone has you went to the went to your first chemistry practical maybe in long back in class 6 or 7 when someone taught you you know that is an H 2 S gas. So, that olfactory memory remains somewhere stored in your brain. So, next time when you go to a new place and you smell that you say ah oh, that is H 2 S. So, ah oh, that H 2 S is basically you smell a fresh H 2 S in another lab which is a new lab. Now, that signal went from your nose all the way to the brain through the sensory modalities through the sensory neurons and there it was decoded by the brain, because it already has a stored piece of information in terms of by a maybe long term potentiation or long term depression or maybe some totally unknown unknown pathway it is it is already known. And that signal or that stored memory helps you to realize oh this is H 2 S and then you decode that piece of information. And same holds true for hearing also. So, you hear from your childhood you hear the sound of your say father mother. So, that frequency 
is kind of coded in your brain in the all in the in the hearing area okay it is all coded in the some there are cortical zones where the hearing informations are being processed and based on that you make your oh okay this is my father who is speaking or this is my mother so over a phone you never had to process that who is talking unless it's a some totally different voice so the modality remains the same here is the sensor in the either in your eyes or in your tongue or in your ear or in your nose and those sensors senses the signal electrically coded the signal all the way to the brain and in the brain brain decode the signal based on the memory traces which are already stored it's kind of a matching you know sometimes we say you know this smell is very similar to hydrogen sulfide smell or h2s smell that means this is not really that but it's kind of close in other words the information or the electrical signal which is stored is very similar to the electrical signal of this xyz molecule which you say it is very similar, but it is not the same. Okay. So, with this uh, let us formally draw the different structures and, and kind of get into it and kind of appreciate the way nature has uh, designed us or evolved us to make us more smart individuals. Okay. So, we are into section 5, nervous system and within nervous system now we are into special senses special senses and we are into lecture 9 so so let's first start with our Olfaction, which is not very well developed. So, regarding olfaction, so this is the nose of an individual, this is the mouth, and okay. So, what exactly is happening on the nose? So, these are volatiles. There could be several kind of volatiles which are reaching, and these volatile molecules enter. So, let's represent the volatiles in terms of something like this. Okay. These are different kind of volatile molecules, different colors represent different kind of volatiles. So, these volatiles are entering your nose. So, inside the nose what is happening is out here, there is an area which is called regio olfactoria. This is called regio olfactoria, and on top of regio olfactoria is bulbus olfactorius, something like this. bulbus olfactorius and uh, if you really look at the cross section of this at the cellular details if i so it looks like this so there are individual cells like this these are the olfactory cells Likewise, likewise, okay. okay. So, these cells, what you see? So, this is where this is the zone where. This is all the crisscrossing out here, and these are the nucleus of these individual sensory cells. So, these are the sensory cells. So, and these volatiles, what you are seeing out here, 
reaches here all the different volatiles. Okay. So, these volatiles bind to these specific neurons specific cellular. So, these are the sensory. Okay. So, what you see out here what I have just now drawn are olfactory you can call them olfactory sensors. So, what is happening is that these specific volatiles bind to these cells and once they bind to these cells. So, they generate a electrical current out here. This electrical current is all the way traveling to the spinal cord depending on so, these there are <coughs> either these are these individual cells what you see they bind to a specific kind of volatiles or they may be a combinatorial output. So, say for example, it means say for example, this one say for I name them as A, B, C. Say for example, one option is that A binds to say only this these blue ones. Okay. B binds to only to the red ones, C binds to only to the green ones. Okay. That is one option how the electrical signal can reach or there may be like you know that all of them bind to all of them, but there is a different kind of coding, but most likelihood is like this that there are individual set of uh, sensors which binds to specific volatiles and based on that a signal is being generated out along this pathway and it reaches to the brain. So, say for example, now we have a mixed volatile coming which has few reds uh, say for example, 100 molecules of red, 20 molecules of blue and say 10 molecules of green. So, total number of signal of the one which is the highest will be bound and that will create the highest amount of signal as compared to the other one which are 10 and 20. Okay. So, those signals will be less. So, automatically when the brain will be processing this information. So, brain will tell okay, the one which has highest number of signals that smell is being dominated by those volatiles which are present in higher concentration in a mixture or you may be have a pure red on a, all the red molecules are there or may be a pure green or a pure blue or nth. So, there are thousands and thousands of volatiles all across the world and based on that we have olfactory memories which are I would not say well developed it is ok good enough for our survival ok in human being as compared to rats or mice or other rodents which have to depend a whole lot. So, but this is the basic architecture. So, from here these signals eventually reaches to the brain via spinal cord to brain via spinal cord and in the brain these are process in the cortex and based on that we identify a smell. So, this is the basic architecture of olfaction. So, from here we will move on to the next olfactory uh, sorry next uh, sensory system which is our tongue. So, think of it let us first of all try to practically understand it. You take sugar have a very clear oh this is sweet one option you take salt you know okay, this is salty. Now, say for example, you take something which is which is a mixture of little bit salt and little bit sugar and I say you know it is kind of a mix how we identify all these things or you take say vinegar you say you know or you go to a Chinese restaurant they they use all this kind of different salts which gives a very pungent smell you know so, um, it is something or you go to have ice cream you can say you know there is a it is it's, it's hot or, or, or something like that and it is cold you know it has this kind of you know smell or likewise. So, how the tongue actually does all these things. So, if you look at the so talking about so basically it is all also called uh, gustatory or 
let us call it as taste receptors. Okay, what I will do, I will draw the map of the of the tongue to give you an idea. So, this is how your tongue looks like. Okay. I am giving for all the different kind of situation, I am just drawing all the four. Okay. So, so, for example, when we say sweet, something is sweet. So, within this there is a map, a specific region which gets activated, which is the tip of the tongue. You can try out this experiment all by yourself. It is this region, which is mostly affected when we talk about sweet, something is sweet. So, you take sugar and you put it on the tip of your tip of your tongue and you will feel that this this part is the one which senses the sweetness okay now there is a next one which is your salty something which is just reverse salt is tested partly by the same region but slightly more in the map if we look at it it is the same region which is testing but it is much more spread out as compared to the so, uh, as compared to the sugar, and in between there is another zone, which is taking care of. So, okay, let me uh, let me write it down. So, this is salt, and in between lies certain regions which are, say, for example, you take uh, yogurt or something like that. Okay, this is the one which is taking care of your sour kind of feeling, and yet there is another region which is taking care of your bitterness something like you know something which is very very bitter okay and that part lies somewhere in the back of your so what essentially this means but essentially means these different areas of salt sugar sour bitter there are specific sensory neurons so, whenever we eat something, those molecules which imparts us taste, those taste molecule goes and bind to those specific spots. And once they bind to those spots, they generate an electrical signal. Those electrical signal again follows the same arch, same functional architecture. They from there move on to the spinal cord, from the spinal cord they move on to the brain and within the brain if for that particular taste, we already have a stored memory, then it is fine, it, it, it is able to correlate, okay, this is sugar, you know, this is sour, this is and, and based on that they say, okay, this is, this is ice cream or this is, uh, this is say mango or this is uh, uh, some other fruit, okay, uh, say for example, orange or something, okay. but if it is not there, then that new piece of information it stores. And if it is there, then it can. It, uh, you you are in a position to tell them, hey, you know, or then you say, you know, it's something like orange, but it, it is not orange. Okay, so mind it. Whenever you talk about orange or say mango, you always have to remember the other side. For that piece of information, there is not only a taste, but there is a visual information too. So whenever we talk about the storage of informations in our brain for any specific thing. There are multiple ways how we code that information. For a mango, there is a visual cue. So you know, you see a mango, you say, okay, this is a mango. Or you see a lemon, you say, okay, this is a lemon. Fine. That is a visual way of looking at it. But the same piece, when you taste, it has sweet or you know, sour or bitter, whatsoever. Okay. There is another set of information. Fine. So now for mango you have one information which is coming from your tongue one information coming from your memory as uh, or from your from your eyes so there are for the same thing when you have to decode all these things comes into your mind and you say okay this is a mango or something which is not a mango but very similar to mango you say it is very similar to mango or some other fruit or some other food or some anything for everything we have different special sensory modalities based on which we identify okay this is mango this is xyz this is this this is that likewise 
there are several ways how we kind of look into like decode the information. Okay. So, now after doing the olfactory and the taste receptors, now what we will do we will move on to the eyes, which is much more complex system to look with or the visual system. Okay. Eyes are the visual system. So, what I will do the first thing I will do I will draw the eye. So, that, that gives you an idea exactly how it looks like at the structural detail. Okay. So, what you see this structure is the lens. The outermost structures it is actually double layer, this is called cornea, which is devoid of a devoid of blood vessel the cornea. This is a blank space with filled with fluid called vitreous gel or vitreous space. Okay. Then on the back side of it is thing called this is your retina, which is drawing in red, okay. and of course here there is a spot from where the signal goes. Okay, so this is your retina, and uh, in between there are a few other things which are not very important. So just for your understanding sake, so this is called aqueous humor. Aqueous humor. This one is called iris, which is holding just in front of the lens, slightly on on the side, and 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 this is the lens. Okay, so I'm just putting the lens like this. It's a transparent tissue out here. So what happens is that when the light falls light passes through this, passes through this and then falls on the retina likewise. Okay. Couple of things here for you to understand, the I told you the cornea is a non vasculated tissue. So, whenever you hear about uh, replacement, corneal replacement those are much more successful, because there is no vasculature, there is hardly any immune reaction, cornea from a donate person who donates the cornea is transplanted into another individual. The lens is a transparent tissue, this is the transparent tissue means these are cells which are devoid of all the organelles. Why is it so? It is a very interesting uh, uh, cellular process and I will discuss this, because these cells which are present out here which are present out here in the lens are follow a same routine as red blood cells. So, in the next section while I will be moving to about the cell types, I will talk about how these lens cells are formed, because lens cells and red blood cells follow the same pattern. So, at this point just remember, just remember that these are transparent cells they do not have anything, so that the light can pass through it. Otherwise, through a cell a light cannot pass or light will pass, because a lot of light will be lost, but here nothing gets lost. So, in case your lens has problem, so the option is you replace the lens and that is what exactly happens in people who suffer from problems with the blockage in the lens and all those things. Okay. And <laughs> then you have the retina which is this red patch what I am putting here. Okay. What is the cellular structure of the retina is the most important part to discuss. Okay. So, now I will move on to the structure of retina. So, retina is again just like 
the olfactory receptor or the taste receptors. Retina consists of two specialized kind of cells, which could sense lights of different uh, wavelengths. Okay. They could sense color, they could sense intensity of light. So, there are cells which could sense intensity in, and those are called the rods, different light intensities from very you can see things in the dark, you can see things in the very bright. So, these are the rods which are helpful in figuring that out and here there are another set of cells which helps you to sense color. Those are called cones, cones for uh, cones C for colors okay. just for you guys to kind of you know remember it. Okay. These cones are not active during the night, because if you realize in the night without any kind of, so if you are in a dark place, if you look at the trees or look at anything around you, it all looks black. So, during the dim light, during no light, almost hardly any light, you are totally dependent on the rods. So, if a system is adapted to live in the dark, they have a much well developed rod based system as compared to the cone, where cone is not needed, because you do not have to distinct about colors. So, just for your understanding sake, those fishes or those species in the ocean, which lives at a further depth, do not have a well developed cone system, or they may not have even any cones in their system because they do not need to discriminate color, because the water, because the light does not penetrate through the water into, I mean it hardly penetrates to a certain depth, beyond that there is no light. So, and because you must have you guys who kind of look through discovery channels or anything you must have seen, whenever these people go inside the sea, they have this huge reflect like lights on their head, like you know they should be able to see, because there is no light, sunlight does not reaches there. So, for and, and there is a huge amount of uh, animal species, which survives in those uh, unfathomable depth of the ocean floor. And those uh, species entirely depends on the rod based systems, they do not depend on the cone, because they do not need any kind of uh, any kind of cone support. So, this is the kind of give you an idea that these sensory receptors have developed or because of our requirements in the evolution, whichever condition we have kind of you know developed, these uh, sensory receptors have adapted and their usage and their non usage has dependent on absolutely on what kind of physical modalities we had to detect. So, with this small background, I will come to the circuit of the retina. So, I have already shown you the position of the retina. So, now I will draw the circuit. So, the circuit looks something like this. So, so imagine the I showed you the side view of the retina, imagine that I draw the eye like this once again. and the light is falling like this. Okay. So, here you have the retina and now I am doing drawing the cross section of the retina out here. So, it is something like this there the, the for this layer is called okay. so these are the typical morphology of the rod cells, and then you have these are the cones, okay. then they have the rods, okay. so I am just for simplicity sake, I am only drawing four different cell cells here, so that okay. and 
I will, I will explain it, what does that mean. Okay. Okay. <coughs> this is one layer, which is the called the rod and cone layer. Rod and cone layer, and beyond that layer, there is something called red pigment epithelial cell (PGE) layer, pigment epithelial cells cell layer. Okay, and top of this, you have another cell, another set of cells which are called horizontal cells which are spread out like this. Okay, these are all different kind of neuronal cells and they are forming synapses with okay. Okay, this is the horizontal level cell layer and then you have another something called a bipolar cell layer. You have something like cells like this. Okay. 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 So. Okay. So this is the bipolar cell layer. Then you have something called this is a very interesting cell, these are called amacrine cells. I will talk about what are the functions of these amacrine cells. These are currently under intense study, and then you have these okay. So, these are the ganglion cells. So, let us start naming them. So, these red ones are the horizontal cells, horizontal cells, then you have the here the bipolar cells, then you have the blue ones as amacrine cells. cells okay and then you have the ganglion cells okay so if you look at the structure of the retina this is a five cell layer structure so if you look at the absolutely the furthest layer so that is the back which is retinal pigment epithelial cell which is out here, let me shade it for you. So, this is that layer which is and this is the cell layer which supports the rods and the cones. Okay. Then you have the rods and the cones layers, layer 2 out here. Layer 3, you have the horizontal layer, layer 4, you have the bipolar layer, layer 5, layer 6, layer 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, layer 5, amacrine layer, and layer 6, which is the ganglion layer. It is a very beautifully arranged. So, if you take a cross section of the retina, it is very, very beautifully arranged, and the light is falling. Now, this is light is falling from this side. So, light is falling like this. Once again, bear with me. Okay. So, light is falling like this. So, light passes through these, and because none of these cells in between, none of these cells in between have any kind of sensory receptors out here. So, the light reaches all the way out here and from here the signal transduction starts. So, 
So, what essentially happens is this now if we look at the structure of the rods and cones in further details. While I was drawing I told you that I will come back. So, there are some very intricate details which needs our specific attention. So, these this is a classic rod okay, what I am drawing now. Okay. So, this is how the rod cells are rod or then I will follow the cone which is more like is a membrane as a structure out there. Okay. So, this is called the outer membrane of the rods and cones both for them this is the outer membrane. Okay. And here you have lot of mitochondria and here you have the nucleus, nucleus same for both of them nucleus you have lot of mitochondria. and this is the synaptic zone, this is where it is synapsing with the next layer which is if you look at the picture. So, it is synapting with the horizontal and the bipolar cells at this layers and so mind it they are always synapsing on multiple cell types, it is not only synapsing on one cell type. So, coming back, so these are the synaptic zone okay. and this is the zone if you look at it in further detail if, if, I, if, I, if I blow this up or blow this up. So, this zone is something like membrane disc, it is something like this and this dimension is around 20 nanometer from here to here around 20 nanometer and this is called membrane disc and there are great number of membrane disc out here which you can see I am just for simplicity sake I have just drawn few of them membrane discs with visual pigments. So, this is basically essentially the architecture of the rods and the cones. So, what is exactly happening is this in this zone if I further blow this up there are receptors which are sitting like this. Okay. So, the receptors are sitting like this okay. all the red spots are the receptors on that membrane and same is for the color uh, for the cones. Okay. Now, what is happening when the light is falling here is a light photon H nu light is falling. So, whenever the light is falling these it binds to these receptors the photons likewise and when the photon binds that leads to electrical signal this is how it works. So, this so here there is something which you people have to realize this is something there is something called a dark current. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, you understand this concept then you will be able to realize. So, under normal conditions when light is not falling say for example, it is normal suppose I am in a dark place and light is not falling on me. These neurons are sending signals to the next layer. So, without any any ligand no light is falling as soon as the light starts falling they stop sending the signal. So, in other word what is happening is this if I draw it say for example, this is a matrix I am drawing and let me put it like this okay. three situation one situation two situation three and these are the sensor elements. Okay. these are the sensor elements and I have a reputation here 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 
Okay. So, this is the same panel which is so now in the dark. So, all of them are under this situation, all of them are active, okay. Active. So, this circle means they are all active. There is no light, you put it, no light. And imagine these are the different rods and cones which are sitting there, or just for simplicity sake, think these are all rods which are sitting there. Okay. No light, all of them are active, they are sending certain signals. Now, light starts falling, now plus light or in other photons are started binding. So, light falls differentially at different. So, now the one which has blue on which the lights are falling. Okay. So, here there is no light falling, here is there is no light falling, no light falling, no light falling, no light falling. Okay. Now, these are the ones where the light starts falling. The photons are binding to these ones. So, as soon as the photon starts binding to this, the signal which was it was sending. So, these are the signal which are being sent in stage 2 and this one these neurons are no more. So, no signal, no signal, no signal, no signal, no signal, no signal. So, now in this situation 2 you see a pattern. So, this is active, this is active, this is active, this one so, this one is active, this one is active, this one is active, 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 active. So, this creates a map now about the structure which you are trying to see and the current which are being sent when during no light situation is called dark current, it is just work reverse. So, remember this, this is very important. So, if I go back into this picture now, whenever the light falls, the they bind the A and the signal ceases to move. When the light is not falling, the signal is there on the process. So, it is just the reverse of it, this is how and that is why it is called the dark current and this is the way you have to kind of appreciate it. So, this is a situation 2, so there could be a situation 3, where the light is falling at other. So, it makes a different kind of map, say for example, now light is only falling to these 6 signals are going and all the rest are no more active. So, you create a different kind of map like this. So, the map which is getting formed is something like this uh, or something which will have to exclude this one okay, somewhere other. Now, think of it. So, this is a new map which formed. Before this the map was something different, the map was like this. Okay. Look at the two structures, they are different. Okay. So, this is exactly what I am trying to tell you, it is just like you have say for example, those of you have gone to uh, see this cricket matches or something in a flood light panel. So, on a flood light panel I can make an M or I can make a D, I can make an A, I can make an Q, I can make an Z by switching on switching off certain light. So, you can see a pattern out there okay. likewise. I can switch off certain light, I can switch on certain light on a panel, that is exactly is the retina is all about. And if this concept is clear to you people, so now if you look at the structure out here, this whole complex circuit. So, if you look at this complex circuit, this complex circuit is nothing but a, a panel. And as long as this you understand it as a panel, this will make more sense to you people than kind of you know grasping through all the nitty gritty details of cellular geometry, which would not make sense. You have to understand that always think of the analogy of a flood light in, a, in any place. So, there is a panel of flood light, you can switch on and switch off light and make a pattern on that. You can make A, you can make Z, you can make Q, you can make 8, you can make 9, you can make 1, you can switch off all the lights and still you have the 1. Okay. Or like keep a central line like that, you can you can make an eye, you know, like this. So, this exactly is the retina is all about. It creates a pattern and that pattern goes all the way to your brain. And same way it creates a color coding using your the cone receptors. So, the cones helps in the color, but in the dark there is no color. So, this is basically what I expect 
you people to appreciate and understand this very, very fundamental concept, the way we store visual information. As long as that is clear to you people, rest is all cakewalk, then you can grab anything, any book or anything, you can figure it out exactly what is happening. End of the day, it is a coding of ionic electrical phenomena, which is stored in the brain. And again, the same thing happens, these ganglion cell through spinal cord, see reaches the brain. Okay. That is it through spinal cord to the brain and from the brain they got decoded and you know that this is 1, this is 8, this is 7, this is 6, this is m, this is q, this is f, this is m likewise. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to cover on about the eyes. Now, I will go on to the third modality which is your hearing modality. This is almost follow the same thing, but they have a slightly different geometry and that is what I am going to discuss now. Okay. So, those of you, so we have two ears okay. and if you look at the way, give me one second, okay. the way it is, it is basically the sound waves which are moving out here through the canal it moves all the way inside. So, the way it works is this, these are the sound waves which are coming okay. and there you have a air conduction zone out here, it is a bony matrix out here it is very bony. And then out here it hits upon three specific bones, the sound hits upon three specific bones and the first <coughs> one is called malleus, second one is called incus, third one is called stapes, this is the third bone which I am drawing now called stapes. Okay. And sometimes this is also called auditory meters m e a t u s okay so now from here starts it the journey of the sound waves as it is moving through out inside the ear after it crosses this it goes inside the cochlea so this is the zone which is very important for us the structure is a very kind of if you look in the picture, it looks a very complex structure, but we will come to that. And actually, this is not exactly a oh sorry, it is actually more like this. Okay. Do not get worried about this structure, I will just try to tell you something which before I draw this structure in depth. So, whenever you hear sound you hear a piano, you know this is a piano, those who have some sense about uh, sound of musical instrument or you hear a drum, you say okay, that is a drum beat or you listen to saxophone, you say that is a saxophone or you listen somebody is kind of have filled the glasses with different amount of water and you know there is that tinkering sound, you could figure that out somebody is kind of creating those sound or you create a like whistle, you know the sound. Okay. So, this whistle, shrill and all these things, you understand all this. So, what exactly that does that mean? So, if you look from the electronics perspective, so that means, you have a sensor, which should be able to sense the different sound frequencies. Okay. That is very, very important for you, or so different sound frequencies or different wavelength of sound. There are only two ways you can figure out a sound, either you know the frequency or you know the wavelength. Okay. Based on that, you should be able to figure out what kind of sound is that. So, if you look now, if you look at the keyboards, any keyboard, you play on a keyboard. So, you do it like the sa, re, ga, ma, pa, or, or like in a do, re, if you, if you are in the western music, you say do, re, la, ma, likewise. Okay. So, every time you kind of you know bang on to a specific key, it creates a unique signal. Okay. 
and based on that you compose a song. So, you know this frequency, this frequency, this frequency, this frequency. So, based on that you create a specific kind of node, a specific kind of line. As long as this concept is clear, then here is a very simple thing. Now, I will come back to the cochlear structure, which I told you that this is a complex structure, but do not worry. We keep this background in mind. So, the structure of cochlea is something like this. Do not worry about this part, what I am drawing in the top, because that is involved all the balancing act. And this tube is more like this. Okay. Now, with respect to tapes, which was the last bone, it was here. And here you have the incus, and here you have the malleus. And this one is called oval window. Use a smaller, finer tip. So this one is oval window, and this one is called round window. Sound enters through this likewise, from here the sound is entering, sound waves are entering here. So, now all along this pathway what you see, there are specific cells which are sitting like this. Now, when I am drawing this, I will draw your attention to a keyboard. Imagine these what I am drawing now as the as the keys of the keyboard. Say for example, I am putting that K 1, K 2, K 3, K 4, K 5, K 6, K 7 likewise all throughout their line like this. So, whenever a sound wave enters here these keyboards based on the frequency or the nature of the sound frequency or wavelength they get activated. And these specific component of the keyboards of the ear are called hair cells H A I R they have nothing to do with your hair they are very similar to that hair cells similar to in terms of the structure okay. they are called hair cells. These hair cells are the ones which are a very specialized kind of neuron just like the rods and the cones, which code for a specific sound frequencies and wavelengths. Okay. Now, how the hair cell structures look like something like this. So, if you draw a hair cell structure it is like this. This is how the hair cell structures look like. So, they have ciliated structures like this. So, whenever there is a sound wave hits upon either they bent they all. So, these are these are underneath these are connected by different cytoskeletal protein. So, whenever a sound wave hits a specific chord and if this particular hair cells which I have drawn is coded for specific frequencies at this frequency matches with this frequency out here. So, they all bent in one direction, they all bent in something like this. If this bends in one direction, it will pull along with it, it is kind of a spring, it will pull all of them together on the other direction. And as soon as it pulls, there are something called mechanosensitive ion channels out here. Mechano, because there is a mechanical motion here, sensitive ion channels. And as soon as this mechanosensitive ion channels gets activated, this leads to the flow of sodium ions inside it. As soon as the sodium ions goes beyond the threshold, it generates an action potential. 
and this underneath is connected with another set of neurons, which takes the information to the auditory cortex in the brain through the spinal cord, through spinal cord it takes to the brain. Okay. So, now if we go back to the previous diagram, so from here underneath there are these circuits which are sitting, which will eventually take all the information from here to the, to the brain and likewise. So, whatsoever coding is taking place at different points are getting are sent to the brain for further processing. This is all about how it works. So, now in context of it you replace this whole thing, you replace this whole structure imagine you have this keyboard sitting here with different keys, these are the green color and the keys are connected to your brain likewise. Okay. that is exactly so, you hit upon a specific key, specific signal, hit upon another key then another specific signal moves. So, this is how the ear is coding all the different pieces of information and we hear. So, based on this coding there is memory storage in the cortical region of the brain, which helps us, helps us to decode that this is the voice of your mother, this is the voice of your friend or this is the voice of a bird or this is a vibration from some x y z sources. So, now to summarize what all in the special senses we covered, we talked about the olfactory senses where you smell the volatiles, we talked about the taste buds where we taste a specific things a specialized cells, specialized neuronal cells which senses it. Then we talked about the rods and the cones, which carries the information to the brain, which has specialized neurons in terms of visual information. And then we talked about the hair cells, which carries information of vibrational information to the brain and thereby we hear. So, and what I expect you have to have a simplistic outlook to look at it that every information, every modality, every special sense modality, which is reaching to your brain is being stored for that specific individual piece of information in several ways. It could have a visual component, it could have a hearing component, it could have a taste component and x y z and based on that we develop that concrete memory about that x y z individual or x y z object. Okay. And so, very wonderful uh, uh, combinatorial uh, information storage mechanism, which mankind is trying to understand and what we started in the beginning that is what we call as the neural, neural code. And from here uh, we will talk the one of the tail pieces will be sympathetic and parasympathetic system. So, I will close in here. Thanks a lot for your attention.